Stand up, stand up for Jesus. A lot of times we talk about being soldiers for Christ and look at the Christian armor in Ephesians chapter 6, but sometimes we leave out one element, and uh, I want to begin talking about that in our studies today. Say it with me, Psalm 118, verse 24, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember Hebrews 3 and verse 13, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Well, as I said, I think uh, a big part of this idea of being a soldier of the cross, being a being in the Lord's army uh, is our attitude toward the war. Of course, it's the war of righteousness versus evil. It's the war of being a disciple of Jesus versus being a servant of Satan. And so the element that I am making reference to is that of courage. Courage. It is defined uh, by uh, <clears throat> the secular world, at least, and I think it's a good definition for us as well, as mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. Now, can you relate to that? Um Courage is, uh, is necessary when things get tough, when obstacles grow large, uh, when things become uh, so difficult for us to keep going on. Courage makes all the difference. Uh, can you imagine uh, David as a young shepherd boy facing the giant of the Philistines but God instilled him with courage because it was not him fighting. It was God fighting through him. And uh, we have to remember that as soldiers of the cross as well and be courageous if we're going to uh, fight the battle the way that we need to. So I want to kind of introduce this today. <clears throat> I'm going to start over in Deuteronomy chapter 31, and uh, kind of let that be a springboard for us to continue to other places. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to give a background in numbers right after we read this to kind of add a punch to what's going on here. So let's go over to Deuteronomy 31, or yes, Deuteronomy 31, and um, here's where uh, Joshua is going to take over for Moses because Moses has been told that uh, he will not cross the river and see the promised land uh, because of his uh, how he did not sanctify the Lord uh, when he uh, had this episode where he, he 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 made it he presented himself as the one. Uh, he and Aaron as the ones who were providing water from the rock, and he disobeyed God and struck the rock when he was told to speak to it. And all of this amounted to failing to hallow God, sanctify God. So there's going to be a change now in the leader. It's going to be Joshua. But look at Deuteronomy 31. Then Moses went and spoke these words to all Israel, and he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I can no longer go out and come in. Also, the Lord has said to me, you shall not cross over this Jordan. The Lord your God himself crosses over before you. He will destroy these nations from before you, and you shall dispossess them. Joshua himself crosses over before you, just as the Lord has said. And the Lord will do to them as he did to Sihon and Og, the kings of the Amorites and their land, when he destroyed them, the Lord will give them over to you that you may do to them according to every commandment which I have commanded you. Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one 
who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Wow, what a powerful, powerful message that Moses gives to the people as there's going to be the changing of the guard, the the new leader, Joshua, that comes. He really gives an inspirational speech to the people uh, to keep on following, to keep trusting in God, to complete their mission because God is the one that uh, will lead them. Now, I want to go back and remember with you uh, some history uh, that that preceded this speech that would have truly had an effect uh, upon the attitude of the people. Remember back in uh, Numbers chapters 13 and 14. Let's go back over there and remember this. Um, This is the 12 spies that had been sent to spy out the land Uh, as they return with their reports. Uh, Verse 27, Then they told him and said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruit. They brought back a sample. Verse 28, Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. These were giants. Verse 29, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, the Hittites, the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. But the men who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than Than we, and they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw the giants, the descendants of Anak came from the giants. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. Now, vastly different reports from 10 of the 12 spies versus Joshua and Caleb. What was the difference? Well, you remember in in Moses' speech in Deuteronomy 31, he said, make sure you go over and you dispossess these people from their land, for, for God goes with you. It's God that's doing this. And that was clearly the difference in the reports uh, of the the ten spies versus the two. Because the ten spies were were looking at this as it's just us against them. It's it's just us uh, lowly Israelites against these giant men in this land. And uh, Joshua and Caleb knew that it was God that would go over before them and he would fight their battles As long as they were on God's side and they did what God asked of them, he would be the one that would lead the way. Now, you'll notice as chapter 14 begins, it says, All the congregation lift up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And it gets worse. All the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we died in the land of Egypt, or if only we died in the wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. What a difference in attitudes. What a difference in speeches. And the, the difference to me seems to be clearly that of courage based on knowing that God is the one who's going to give the victory, and they were not relying upon themselves. Uh, remember with me the message over in John chapter 14. And as, we're going to go all the way from God giving a message through Moses to now Jesus giving a message to be courageous. 
And so over in John chapter 14, Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. Now, what is that? That is a message. Uh, Don't be discouraged, but take courage. Don't let your heart be troubled. Now, as we go on, Jesus says uh, that he is going to do more and more for them, but it, they have to follow him by faith. So as you, as you think about Jesus' speech here, remember the, the, the role that faith plays in this, how it fuels our courage. Uh, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Verse 3, I go and prepare a place for you, and I'll come again to receive you to myself. And so he inspires them to be courageous. Do not be troubled. Do not doubt, but be courageous. And when you get down to verse 27 of this same chapter, Jesus says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So this happens because of courage. Courage inspired by the fact that God is going to take care of us. In in John chapter 14, Jesus has told his disciples that he is going to have to go away from them But in going away, he's going to send the Comforter who will teach them all things and bring all of his words to their remembrance. So don't be troubled. Be inspired by how I'm going to get. You can have peace of mind, which it's hard to be courageous when you don't have peace of mind. But Jesus says, I'm going to do these things for you so that you can be at peace. Um, Time's gone, but I'm going to look with you at just uh, one other uh, passage. Well, maybe two, uh, because I think they're connected to one another. But over in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and in verse 7, notice that Paul says to Timothy, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, these are, these are attributes that come from those who are at peace and who have courage in God. We don't have a fearful disposition. We are courageous. God has given us the spirit of power and of love, not in ourselves, but in him. And this idea of a sound mind has to do with clarity, understanding who we are and, and what our mission is. And over, I just want to add with this 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18, where John says, There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Perfect love cast out fear. There's no fear in love. So you see that love is an enemy of fear and vice versa. But as we learn to love God and then that fear of the unknown fear of, of our, uh, the, our enemies and, and other fears that this life would try to impose on us, the more we love God, the, the less and less those fears have an impact on us. And so that's, that's going to allow us to become the courageous soldiers, the courageous warriors that God has planned in his church. We're going to talk more about courage, the Lord willing. Let's pray. Holy Father in heaven, we're grateful to you for this day. We're grateful for all the examples that we can look at through your word that they they really bowed up under pressure and they put their faith in you and they were courageous. 
Father, help us to imitate that spirit and not allow the things of this world to make us fearful and to keep us from fighting the good fight of faith. Forgive our sins, Father, as we repent of them, and please be with all those who are on our mind that need you in a special way. When you're finished with us here, please bring us home to glory to be with you forever is our prayer in Jesus' name, and amen. Courage. It's, uh, it's not something that is going to be optional uh, in the fight because you can imagine uh, sending someone out into a physical fight who lacked courage. They're not going to be able to be a warrior. Are they? They're just simply not going to be a warrior, are they? They, they can't keep on in the face of danger when they lack courage. And what makes us think that uh, we're going to be any different in the spiritual battle if we lack courage? So let's uh, think more about that in our next study. Thanks for being a part of this study. I hope that uh, there are things that have challenged us all uh, to do more, to, to change our attitude to one of courage so that we can really be effective in this fight against evil. You have thoughts about uh, the things we've looked at today? Leave your comment right there on Facebook or YouTube. Feel free to send an email to me at jdmundy3355 at gmail.com, and we can correspond that way. Hey, take your phone out, turn on your camera, and aim it toward that QR code. Right on your screen, the link to our website will come up, stoneridgechurchofchrist.com. Be sure and go there and take advantage of all the resources there to help you in becoming a Christian and in your Christian walk. <clears throat> we want to invite you to come and be with us at our assemblies. We meet Sundays at 9 a.m. Pardon me. <laughs> Sundays at 10 a.m. for Bible class, classes for all ages. Then we'll worship at 11 a.m. and again at 6 p.m. And Wednesdays, we meet at 7 p.m. for Bible study. And anytime we have Bible study, we'll provide classes for all ages. So whatever age you are, come and be a part of these studies. We want everybody to take advantage of them. The, the teachers put a lot, a lot of work into these studies. And so we'd love to have everyone come and take advantage of them. Hey, until next time, if the Lord grants us life and spares us so that we can have another opportunity to study his word together, I hope that you have a great day that you will determine right now that you, you'll not just be a soldier in God's army, but you will be a courageous soldier.